simply a lighter weight than what you might work with in Trader Workstation API because you don't have to operate the Trader Workstation or a heavier uh, local API resource downloaded for your system. The system can move a lot faster and require a lot less hardware resources. So not necessarily, as, yeah, not as much memory, storage, processing, things like that. You're listening to IBKR Podcasts. Find more conversations at ibkrpodcasts.com. Please remember any trading discussions are for information purposes only and are not intended to portray recommendations. Please listen to further disclosures at the end of today's episode. Now, welcome to our show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to IBKR Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking to Interactive Brokers, Andrew Wise, who is the U.S. API Support Supervisor. And we're going to talk about, as you know, at Interactive Brokers, we have the TWS API, and we also have something called the REST API. So we're going to focus on that a bit today, and we're going to, this will be one of several podcasts devoted to more of a tech centric focus on the APIs. All right, so to start off, Andrew, what is the REST API? So a REST API is a more general term for any application programming interface that conforms to the constraints of the REST architecture. The REST architecture is a development from the early aughts, which is kind of like the standard web protocol, so that way websites can communicate back and forth to one another. And Interactive Brokers REST Web API specifically allows you to use a lot of the functionality that you might find or in the client portal directly in the form of an API. So in other words, you're using the browser, you're developing mm -hmm. within the browser, and you can call the API functions to access data similar to how client portal displays it, but build your own interface. Exactly. And you can create your own interface, or you could even use the API entirely in a automated sense. So that way you can make all of these calls happening without ever having to physically look at the data yourself. You would be able to program some kind of bot or trading API, trading AI rather, so that way it could handle all of that data coming through and make trades on your behalf. So do you use a particular programming language with the REST API or is it agnostic or how does that go? Yeah, so that's sort of the beauty of a REST API is that because it does focus on these kind of standards from the early aughts, most programming languages have some form of integration that allow for RESTful requesting. Popular one we see is the Python request library, However, C Sharp implements something very similar. Same thing with uh, JavaScript as well. So it's really agnostic to any language you like. You can even use direct curl requests if you like to even directly go through your uh, command prompt or terminal. Do you have to have an active Interactive Brokers account to use the Client Portal REST API? Yes, just like anywhere else in Interactive Brokers to use the Trader Workstation, Client Portal, or any of our APIs, you do need to have a fully funded account with Interactive Brokers. Uh, we also do require that pro accounts are in use. We do not support the light accounts or those U.S. Uh, commission-free trading accounts and interactive brokers. So IBKR Pro and a funded account are required to begin trading with the REST API. Okay, good. Here's another question. Should you use the gateway or what is a gateway anyway? For most of our customers that use the Client Portal API, you're going to be using something called the uh, Client Portal Gateway. And this is just a means of authentication it's a Java client that runs locally that's typically ran in the background. And what that does is just make sure it verifies that all requests going out are going to be sent from you as the user without having to worry about any potential alternative authentication, like no API keys or anything like that are in use. However, some clients might find that they might need a more autonomous solution and for our institutional clients, we support something called OAuth, which they can use to obtain access token, token secret, and they can do all of the web requests through an OAuth 1.0a authentication method. So if I have that gateway up and running, do I still need mm -hmm. to have client portal or TWS up and running, or is that suitable? Oh, no, not at all. Once you have the client portal gate gateway running, you don't need to have anything else open. And in fact, we actually encourage you not to. Uh, just because of the competing market data sessions. So in the Client Portal Web API, we actually have a two-tiered authentication structure. 
And what that means is if you log in with the client portal initially, you're going to be able to query things like portfolio endpoints. So that way you can look at your balance and everything, but you won't actually be able to see market data or trade. But that also allows you to continue trading in other platforms. However, if at any point you would like to trade and, you know, review market data in the API, you would go through the second brokerage session level authentication. Uh, to allow you to trade there. And that is the OAuth or not? Uh, not quite. We have something called the iServer endpoints and users might be familiar with the iServer forward slash auth forward slash SSODH forward slash init endpoint. And what that endpoint allows you to do is it initializes the brokerage session, which is separate from the standard login procedure you would use for the gateway. Ah, okay. And that's because you're going to be trading and using market data and so forth. Exactly. Okay, good. Glad we got that straightened out. All right. So, so does my program have to authenticate every single time? How does that work? Yeah. So for the client portal gateway, every time you log in, or let's say every single day, you would want to run the client portal gateway and then go ahead and log in. Uh, just for reference, the way to log in with the client portal gateway is you do bring up a browser screen and it looks like the same login structure as when you would log into client portal naturally. However, you'll get a message for confirmed is true, just to let you know that you have signed in and then that would enable the web session. From there, you can call that SSODH init endpoint I mentioned before, and then you can authenticate with the brokerage session to begin trading. Um, just like logging into client portal, this will look identical to the way you're used to. So if you have two-factor authentication on your account, this would be prompted for you each time you log logged in on the given day. Okay, that's good to know. And as we know, sometimes Client Portal does time out. You go get some coffee and you come back and you have to log in again. Mm -hmm. So is that, the, is that the same? Would that apply here too? It would to a point, but luckily we would able, be able to automate that process. And by that, I mean, if you ever see a message where you are disconnected, you would be able to call that iServer SSODH init endpoint once again, and that will re-authenticate your session for you. So you can even automate the way to re-authenticate every day. So you just have something in the background saying, am I still awake or, and if I'm exactly. not awake? Exactly, yeah. Okay, good. So why would why would someone, obviously there's going to be somebody who knows Python and they're familiar with it, but why would you use this REST API as opposed to, say, for instance, the TWS API? One of the more common reasons that we see these implementations is it's simply a lighter weight than what you might work with in Trader Workstation API. Because you don't have to operate the Trader Workstation or a heavier uh, local API resource downloaded for your system, the system can move a lot faster and require a lot less hardware resources. Or so memory, not right? Yeah, not as much memory, storage, processing, things like that. It could all move a little bit faster because it's not dealing with as much other uh, software to handle it. Another advantage is that going back to the whole REST API standard, if we're all on the same kind of communication patterns, a lot more people might be familiar with it without having to go into the niche of the Trader Workstation API, which is a lot more unique than some other API implementations. So let's say here's a question not on our list, but I'm going to throw this out mm -hmm. anyway. I'm just thinking about it. So let's say, for instance, uh, I know JavaScript and I want to work with the REST mm -hmm. API, but I want to write an app for my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, so can I use it that way? Can I do that with my smartphone? Yeah, absolutely. So that would require that you have the OAuth implementation. So that would require an institutional client to some degree. However, you would be able to absolutely make an app for your phone you would be able to make a local personal website or web page even and you would be able to operate the client portal api however you like using that kind of uh, interface all right so that's good to note browser still on your phone okay mm -hmm. so who in your obviously you deal with a lot of people in the united states who are using the apis and mm -hmm. who really are the primary users uh for the rest api yeah, so it's it's actually quite a bit of variety. In the long term, I've been here about two years at Interactive Brokers now. And in that two years, it's typically been more of the kind of individual traders, those independent users. However, in recent years, as things began to develop more and we added more and more feature sets, we've seen a lot more of the institutional crowd come along. Uh, so we have a lot of third-party developers, you know, building out larger platforms. I think a lot of customers are familiar with services like TradingView. And then we also have a lot of independent traders like financial advisors that are building 
websites for themselves to trade as well as accessing or accessible platforms for their clients to log in from their smartphones to kind of uh, work with the API that way. So in other words, if I am an advisor and I have some programmers who I'm working with and we have a se separate little login for our clients, we can mm -hmm. basically authenticate with the client portal REST API and then get mm -hmm. our reports or, you know, kind of white brand the portfolio analyst or something like that. Absolutely. And I'm sure we'll have an episode on this in the future, but we are going to be introducing a topic called the uh, DAM or digital account management. And that is a platform that a lot of advisors will be using to onboard new clients, uh, kind of help with funds and banking for their clients and give a better experience to those white branded interfaces uh, that somebody might use for, you know, monitoring portfolio data as an end user. And that's in development or is it already available? That's already available. And uh, Interactive Brokers right now is actually working to make that more and more popular. We're trying to get the word out there for more and more advisors and third parties to kind of implement that structure. Okay. That sounds pretty exciting. All right. So last and final question is, let's say I'm a developer and I want to start working with this mm -hmm. and I have an account that's funded and it is a pro account. Can I use my paper trading account to like set up some sort of sandbox? for myself? Oh, absolutely. All of our APIs are fully integrated with both live and paper trading account. So if you do have a paper trading account that you would like to test with, you are more than welcome to do so. The only limitation, once again, would be that your live account is created, funded, all of the same limitations you might see otherwise. And tell yeah. us about this new API education site on the uh, IB Care campus. Certainly. So here at Interactive Brokers, we have been doing our best to build out the IB Care campus site for all of the API documentation. This currently houses all of the documentation for TW. API, uh, Client Portal API. We're also building out other APIs such as our Flex Web Service, and hopefully we'll be porting our DAM services over there soon. We also host an array of videos and uh, articles on the IBKR campus that allow people to look up uh, how to integrate Python with Excel, for example. We also have videos uh, start to finish with the Client Portal API using Python and a lot of other beginner-friendly videos as well as some more intermediate learning materials there. Oh, that's really great. So, Andrew Wise, thank you so much for educating us on the REST API, the beginning little breadcrumbs of it. And we'll be doing more of these. Uh, so if you do have any comments, please, uh, please let us know, uh, and also topics. And so everybody, thank you so much for attending. And please leave us a review if you can, wherever you watch your podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to IBKR Podcasts. As always, we have more episodes at ibkrpodcasts.com. And if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education material, such as webinars at ibkrwebinars.com, financial and economic commentary at tradersinsight.news, market-related courses at tradersacademy.online, and quant-related articles at ibkrquant.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. The material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and is necessary seek professional advice. The API examples discussed are purely for technical demonstration purposes and do not constitute trading advice. Also, it is important to remember that placement trades in the paper account is recommended before any live trading.